Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see y'all. Happy May 1st, uh, first Sunday of the month. We're excited. Miss BQ, Miss Garmin over here is going to play our call to worship. So y'all give her attention and encourage her as she plays. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, BQ. It is always a joy to have you play. And she is coming right along. She's doing a wonderful job. So great stuff. Thank you for your willingness to serve the Lord by playing for us. Well, good morning, everybody. So good to see you all. It's just a joy to be back in the Lord's house with you today. I'm excited about what the Lord's going to do in our service. We know that he has a plan. We know that he is setting things up even right now and uh, we kind of have an idea what direction we're going but that don't never mean anything because sometimes it goes in other directions and that's okay but we're just glad to be here to be a servant of the Lord so if you are visiting with us if you're here for the first time if you will look somewhere close in the pew you will find a connection card it's a little white card and uh, those cards are there for you if you could just give us a little information about yourself we can have a record of your visit in a little bit we'll uh, have our offering time and you can just drop those cards in that plate whenever it comes by on your pew there so good to see you all if you're joining us on facebook live so awesome to have you it's always a joy knowing that our services are being broadcast this way so that you can see them virtually all over the world so we're just grateful to have that tool and hope that you're blessed today by our service so good to see you uh, in way of announcements this morning just a few things that i'd like to call your attention to uh, next sunday is mother's day it's isn't that something it comes around pretty quick doesn't it and uh, so we're glad to have uh, we're going to honor the Lord next week, and we're also going to honor our mothers. So be here next week. That's going to be a great time together as we do that. And uh, starting at 9 a.m., if you'd like to come and have muffins with mom, at least and I'll have some things set up out here for you. So come and be a part of muffins with mom. And you can grab a muffin and a juice or whatever you want to. Take it to your Sunday school class and, and just enjoy that uh, together there. But we want to see you here for Mother's Day uh, next Sunday morning. There'll be no evening worship uh, next Sunday night. So just uh, make a note of that as well. Uh, Women of Joy, this is coming up October the 7th through the 9th. And uh, you see the financial uh, things there. Now, I know Teresa's not here today. And um, let, me, let me just say something about that quickly, if I could. Y'all please remember this family in your prayers. Um, her dad, uh, Brother Gene Milam, uh, we've been praying for him now for quite some time. He has uh, some, some difficult health issues that he has been dealing with. And he's over here at Aiken Regional, and I was able to spend some time with him yesterday. Um, he was sleeping, but kind of alert. Um, every once in a while, he'd kind of fire up, and he'd call my name and try to tell me something, and, and uh, it was just good to see that. But we, we have received some news uh, this morning uh, that is, is certainly troubling. So y'all just remember this family. Remember Brother Gene. And uh, just pray that the Lord's will will be done in this situation. So just um, bless, bless that family with your prayers today, if you would. Matter of fact, let's take just a moment and, uh, and let's pray right now. Father, what a day it is to, to come to be able to honor you, just knowing that we can stop what we're doing at any time, just to stop and have a word of prayer for someone else and to intercede on their behalf. Right now, Lord, I just ask uh, for a blessing on Brother Gene. We know that you're in control. We know, Father, that you have... Uh, his life and all of our lives right in your hands. So Lord, I just pray a blessing on him today. I just pray that he's not in any pain. I just pray, Father, that, uh, that he feels the Holy Spirit near him right now. And I just pray, Father, that you just bless him. Heal him in accordance to your will. And Father, just restore his health as you see fit. Father, I ask a blessing on uh, his wife, Elaine, as she has been 
up there for the last several days with virtually no sleep. And, and then Teresa and her sister and this entire family. Lord, we just ask blessings on them. And Father, we just know that your will is going to be done. And we just pray, Father, that you bless this family through all of that. So we give you praise for it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, did, Van, did you have something? Or, okay. Okay, okay. So the women of joy. Okay, the women of joy, you'll see that uh, the bulletin actually says that today's the last day of set up to, to sign up. And then you have a $25 fee this, this due. Since Teresa was not able to be with us this week, we're going to go one more week on that. So next Sunday will be the deadline on that, ladies, if you decide you would like to go. Uh, let me encourage you. Go on these trips with these ladies. This is a great time. It's a wonderful time of, uh, of fellowship one with another. Wonderful time to, to be in, uh, in such a worshipful atmosphere. So I would encourage you uh, to go on those. Now, I'm excited about this. May 22nd, we're going to have our spring picnic. I get excited about picnics. I can't help it, but those are just good things. Going to have it right back over here. And um, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer out here that I think Tasha put together. And it's all out there for you. And uh, so we would encourage everybody to come and be a part of that. The, the church will supply the meat. And then we're asking you to bring sides and desserts so you can... All of that information is on that sheet out there. So if you would, on your way out today, go ahead and sign up so that we can be prepared for this. We're going to invite um, Gethsemane Baptist Church, which is our Spanish ministry that meets here. And they're going to uh, hopefully join us for that. They always bring really good food. So we want to get them to come and be a part of that. So we're excited about it. But uh, put that on your calendar May 22nd, and uh, we will, we'll have a meal together there for our spring picnic. Direct Connect, uh, that is coming up next Saturday. Next Saturday, time has flown, and uh, we have, I say we, but Susan and Jamie and Tasha and others have put a lot of, of work into getting this um, event ready to go, and uh, we're excited about it. How many vendors do we have? Fifteen vendors that are going to be here. They're all going to pitch tents out here in our parking lot, and you'll be able to come by and see their arts and crafts. There'll be free food. There'll be some free entertainment, and uh, just a wonderful day together from 10 to 2. So come and, uh, and be a part of that and see what God is doing here through that ministry that we're doing. Uh, also, VBS is coming, Spark Studios, June 13th through 17th. That's going to be a wonderful time in the Lord for our kids and our adults, so we're excited about that. Get that on your calendar. Then also our quarterly business meeting will be May the 15th, which is two weeks from today. And uh, we'll just be able to go over uh, the things that we need to know from the last quarter. So be here for that. Um, Venmo is still available for you as far as giving is concerned. Uh, if you'd like to use that tool, make sure that you do. The instructions there are, are how to do that. And then ladies trip going to Whistle Stop Cafe. That's coming up towards the end of this month. And uh, don't miss that, ladies. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer for that as well if you'd like to go. Still got a couple of studies going on. Moses we're talking about. We have one more week of Moses, I believe it is, on Wednesday night. And then also our Messianic Prophecy Study. I believe we have uh, two or either three more um, for uh, Brother Dwight in the evenings. But this may stretch out just a little bit with... Uh, missing some Sunday night services to different things, but, uh, but we will have another study uh, this beginning very soon right after that. Any further announcements? Anything that I may be missing? Did I get it all? Talking fast this morning. No lie. Good to see Brother Ken Phipps today. God bless you, brother. So good to have you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, well, let's pray together this morning. Lord, what a day it is to just be in your house. Uh, we're just so grateful to have this opportunity to worship together. Lord, so bless this service this day. We give you honor, and we just love you for what you're going to do through it. We know that you want to use this service to touch somebody's hearts. We just pray, Lord, this time that you will do just that. Just help them to feel you near them this day. And Lord, again, if there's someone that doesn't know you this day, I pray for their salvation through Jesus. And I give you praise and honor and glory for what you're going to do through it. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing a great song called What a Mighty or see, Mighty is Our God. Mighty is Our God. Let's sing this together. Let's sing. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord. Ruler of 
of everything. Sing it again. Mighty is our God. Mighty is our King. Mighty is our Lord. Ruler of everything. His name is higher, higher than any other name. His power is greater, for he is created. This morning, glory to our God, glory to our King, glory to our Lord, ruler of everything. Amen. Let's fellowship one with another. Go around, tell somebody Jesus loves them and that you love them too. Amen. you're making your way back to your seats let's stand back up together let's sing a great song called what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve angels bow before him heaven and what a mighty God we serve. Let's sing that again. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. 
what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. If you serve a mighty God today, give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. And you may be seated. God bless you. I want to take just a few minutes this morning. Maybe somebody has a testimony or a praise report today. Who'd be first? Hey, Joe, let's get you on the mic, brother. Well, you know, I just want to praise God that I'm alive. Amen. And I'm here at church. Uh, I know I've been challenged several times this week with my leg and stuff like that, but I serve a great God. Amen. Don't we all? Hey, thank you, brother. Somebody else? Somebody else? Somebody's got something to praise the Lord about. Amen. Um, my husband was on his way to come pick me up to bring me back to Missouri. I've been here with my wonderful, lovely mother. Um, the car broke down in Calhoun, Georgia on a Saturday afternoon. Nobody to fix it. They tried, several good Samaritans tried to help him up until dark. So he luckily 200 yards away was a hotel. He went and stayed at the hotel. This morning he got in the car and it started. And I can only give God the glory because everybody was praying for him and his safety. And it's only God. Every time I'm in need, it's only God, only God that has come through for me. So for those of you who have doubts or who need help, I'm telling you right now, get before God and he will. Come on now. He will answer your yes, prayers. That's right. Amen. Can you see me? I'm, I'm going to try to talk. I, I'm going to be 96 years old for months. And I can't wait for every Sunday I can go to church. Amen. God bless you. And I, be, I would like to be busy. With, I always taught kids all my life, it seems like. And I would, I would like to do something in church again. Teach the kindergarten kids and, uh, for years. Just pray for me, that's all. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Miss Amy. God bless you. You were so important to us. God bless you. Somebody else. David. So I'm going to praise God because I had... Um, Four brand new agents start and they're all they're working on their licenses so that helps a lot and um, being down 10 agents I actually made my month last month um, so that was that was good praise God for that because <laughs> amen sorry about that guys I'm out of my purview here so I'm I'm causing that little bit of stuff there Yes, ma'am, Miss Susan. I thank God for the wonderful husband and partner that he gave me. Amen. 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 Colin? I've got two things. Uh, one, me and Chloe had uh, safe travels to the beach yesterday, got home safely. And uh, praise God that she passed all of her finals. And... Um, uh, she's heading on to her last semester in nursing school. Amen. That's great. Amen. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Wait your turn. Uh, Tasha said that when I was still back in Colorado, Tasha said, you just got to come Grandma, this is the best church. I just love this church and blah, 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 blah. And so I came. <laughs> and she's right. Uh, you're blessed. You're very blessed. Uh, I'll not be back until whenever God says it's okay. So I just want to say God bless you all. And it's been a joy just being a part of you. Amen. I don't believe you signed the sign-out sheet. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember signing off on that. So, I'm coming, Suzanne. Your turn. <laughs> I just want to give praise to our children, Amen. to BQ, and the other children, and to the parents 
right. and to all the parents who encourage their children to be an active participant in our worship service. Without the parents' encouragement and without starting them young, they will continually withdraw and say, no, I can't do that. But thank you, children, and thank you, parents, for your love and encouragement. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Somebody else? God is good. Amen. Yes, he is. All the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Yes, he is. Well, let's stand together. Let's sing a little more. A couple of hymns that we love around here. One's called The Solid Rock. Let's sing this together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all oh, other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on him. Save your God to thee. How 
be seated. Thank you.
sing about your greatness and how great thou art. Lord, we just want to come to you now and just intercede on behalf of those who are unable to pray for themselves right now. We just know that uh, there are trying things that are going on in people's lives, dealing with sicknesses, dealing with uh, illnesses, dealing with financial problems, dealing with family problems, just things all around us, Lord, that people are searching for answers to see how to handle these things. Lord, I just beg you right now, help them to turn to you. You're the one who's great. You're the one who has the power. You have all the answers. Help each of them this day to see that in you. Help our world turn to Jesus. Father, we're thankful for this time that we have to receive an offering. We just pray, Lord, that, uh, that this day, this offering will be exactly what we need as a church family to continue to minister for you. So, Lord, bless it. Bless the gift. Bless the giver. And just help us, Father, to further your kingdom through it. We give you all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, amen. Thank you, Suzanne. Sometimes in our prayer time, if we will just be still, that's what she was playing about. Just be still in Jesus' name and realize that whatever is on our plate at that particular time, whatever it is that we are dealing with, whatever it is that we are looking at, thinking that there's just no way, we have to remember that the grace of Jesus Christ is enough. That's all we have to have is his grace, and he gives it abundantly. So let's stand together and let's sing about that today.
Come back to that one a little later. We'll get that one on another Sunday. Uh, this is a this next song that we're going to do is uh, was one that is an older song, but it's been very brand new. We've never done it here, and uh, it's called Life Song. And uh, Tasha, give me just a couple of these um, screens here. They, y'all still can't see it, so if you turn around back, empty hands held high, such small sacrifice. If not joined with my life, then I sing in vain tonight. The next slide. Um, here, let me read it from here. If I can, my eyes are so bad. Let my life song, may the words I say and the things I do make my life song sing, bring a smile to you. Then let my life song sing to you. Let my life song sing to you. I want to, and th- I love this part. This is me speaking to the Lord. I want to sign your name to the end of this day knowing that my heart was true. That's what I want to do. And I want to let my life song, how God uses me, I want it to sing to him. And that's what that song is about. It's a wonderful, wonderful song. And uh, maybe we'll get to it a little later today. We'll see. And, uh, but for now, let's, let's talk about the message. And let's talk about what God's going to do through all of this. So I pray that the Holy Spirit has already spoken to you today. And we have had some technical issues the last uh, couple of Sundays. And to be honest with you, we really don't have the answer to that yet. Had we had the answer to that, you wouldn't have just experienced that once again. But, um, but we will get to the bottom of that. It's some sort of connection. I think it's something very simple. And um, we will figure that out. But for now, um, just wanted to go into, you know, we, we've celebrated Easter. We've celebrated the Resurrection Sunday, talking about Jesus being raised from the dead. So all through that process, I had been praying pretty much for where the Lord wanted me to go with another sermon series. You know, where should we go with another sermon series? So, of course, we can celebrate our risen Lord every Sunday. And we should. We should all, we'll always do that. We can never go wrong teaching the teaching and preaching the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we should do that. We should do it often. But for the short term, I just felt like that we should go into something a little bit different in the book of Revelation to look at some things to see where our risen Savior wants us to go as a church. Okay? Good plan. So beginning in chapter 1 of Revelation, go ahead and turn over there. We're going to be in chapter 2. But in the, in the very first part of the book of Revelation, very last book of the Bible, that's right, we see some things. John was given a vision from the Lord to send seven different letters to seven different churches. These were the churches at Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So these are the seven churches that we're going to be looking at. So when you get a moment or two, read chapter 1 on your own. Read chapter 1 on your own, and you will see how Jesus spoke to John and how John identified that it was Jesus that was speaking to him and listening to his instruction. And when you're looking at John chapter, excuse me, Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 through 16 would have been a sight to see. So take a look at that. So in thinking of our own church family, there are only just a few of you that are from the Aiken area. Just a few. (laughs) most of you are transplants you've come from another city or come from another state and have moved into this area 
And the majority of us, from what I can tell, that's the truth. Most of us have come from different places. So as a Christian, when you moved here, it's pretty likely that at the top of your list of things to do, you found it very important to find a church home. That should have been at the top of your list, and most likely it was. Some of you may have found Cornerstone immediately. Others of you may have found someone somewhere else in our area first and made that your church home. You, you should have just came to Cornerstone, but, but that's okay. It's okay. We're glad you're here now. <laughs> God bless you. But seriously, listen, it should, be, it should be a bit of a task to find a church home. It really should be. If, you, if you've done your due diligence and you've done the research with what's available to you and praying for God's guidance, then you ought to be able to make a good decision there. So there's a lot to make in the final decision on a church home. First of all, you ask yourself, what ministries are available? Is there something there at that church that my family can sink their teeth into? Is there something there that they can plug into, be a part of? Particular prayer and care should be given not always, listen now, not always to what we see on the outside, but even more so what we see or don't see on the inside. Some of the most beautiful buildings can house dying or dead congregations. It happens. Some of the most modest in appearance can be on fire for the Lord. Appearance doesn't really matter a whole lot. As most of you know, I, Lisa's not here with us today, so I'm going to talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll hear it. She might be watching it. Hey, honey, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad, I promise but she was here at the church. She was walking down the steps of the children's hall to go out towards the playground. Step, just took a normal step. Something snapped in the back of her knee. So she has really had a time with that. It's getting better. She's doing much, much better. But the very morning after that, we were concerned. I mean, she couldn't put any weight on it at all. And it was, she was just in pain. She had a little swelling. It wasn't much. But there was a difference between the size of the two knees, as you can imagine. From looking at it on the outside, other than that swelling, you really couldn't see anything that would have told you that there was something wrong with her knee. So we went to the emergency room because obviously something was wrong. And the first thing that they did was they made us wait two hours. And that's very minor compared to what's happened to Brother Gene. Now, Gene was in there from um, like 10 a.m. Thursday, and they didn't get him in a room till 5 p.m. on Friday. So you can see that that's a problem. But they made us wait, and then they took her back for an x-ray. They wanted to see something that they could not see from the outside. Follow me? They wanted to have this x-ray to be able to determine what the problem was on the inside. She's doing much better now, by the way. But I give you this illustration for a reason. It's to show you what Jesus was doing with these seven churches. He wanted to give them a spiritual x-ray to determine what was currently happening in their churches and also how it could affect what would be happening in their future. This scripture is relevant to all churches in existence today, and we should constantly be taking inventory of our churches by giving ourselves spiritual x-rays. We need to look at it. So as we examine all of these churches here in Revelation over the next several weeks, we may see a little bit of cornerstone here. We may see a little bit of cornerstone in one church. Perhaps we'll see cornerstone in a couple of churches or more. We'll see. But let's begin with this church at Ephesus. If you haven't already, turn to Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, and let's stand together and let's honor the reading of the Lord's Word. Yep, got it. Amen. 
reads this way. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. Now, just a quick aside. If you don't understand that terminology, read chapter 1. It will help you. Verse 2, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have, uh, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Verse 4 says, yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Verse 7 says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give you give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Father, thank you for this scripture that we have uh, with you giving instruction to uh, John to, to share with this church of Ephesus, Father, and it falls through, follows through all the way to our churches today. So we're grateful we have this instruction. Bless us today as we look at this together, and we just want to honor you through it. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. So as you can see, God intended for these letters to be read by all of the churches so that we can all benefit from them. That's why they are here. He also intended for all of us to read about these seven churches as our own congregation. He wants us to study these together. So he's speaking to all of us, if we're involved in our church, and in, in, in each one of these notes that were written, we're going to find Jesus saying this, whoever has ears, let him hear. He's telling all of us, that this is for every one of us to hear, but not only just hear it, listen to it. That's what he's telling us. Now this church at Ephesus had a little star power. Let me tell you what I mean by that. The leaders of this church were the Apostle Paul, Timothy, and even John himself. Over the years, this church had been blessed with stellar leadership. These Ephesian people had grown rather fond of that trio so much that God ended up placing those men somewhere else. What was God saying about that? Here's what I think he was saying. He was reminding them that by placing these men, this star power, Paul, Timothy, John, these high-profile preachers of that day, he took them and placed them in other places because God was showing that he was in control, not the men. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 reminds us that pastors and teachers are a gift from God and they can be removed at any time to a different service. And I cannot help today but think about today's churches where it seems in some cases that the pastor is the one who is worshipped. You may think this is odd, but it's true. There are churches in our world today that need to be reminded and reminded often that it's God that we worship, not the leadership of the church. In our churches all over the country, there's pastors who are being praised, and here's what's worse, they're allowing it to happen. Now don't misunderstand me. Pastors myself included, we need your encouragement. We do. We need your encouragement. And at a boy or a good sermon comment, things like that are welcome. Pastors all over the world need this to be able to continue to be positive in the work of the Lord. They need those kinds of things. But positive comments and encouragement are wonderful, but that isn't pastor worship. 
Pastor worship is when you have lost or misplaced your love for Christ and put too much emphasis on who your pastor is. That's where it goes bad. So who are the pastors? We are the under shepherd. We are the servants of God, the one who is worthy of worship. And in our churches today, including ours, all over the world, our churches today cannot be careless churches and put our focus on the wrong stuff. Can't have that. Notice with me verses 2 and 3. Jesus began this letter with words of approval for this church at Ephesus. Do you see that? He began by giving them a commendation. The church at Ephesus was a serving church. They stayed incredibly busy doing the work of the Lord. I can only imagine what their weekly opportunities of service may have looked like. They were a sacrificing church. You see in verse 2 and 3 the word persevere. They were sacrificing. They went through some hardships. They endured these things for the sake of Jesus, and he commended them for it. Now Jesus knew that there was a price that the church of Ephesus paid to do his work. They were steadfast. They were a committed bunch. They enjoyed doing the work, and when the going got tough, these were the guys that got going. They were the tough. These Ephesian, this Ephesian, uh, these Ephesian Christians had separated themselves. They, they had separated themselves from false doctrine. They had separated themselves from false teaching and false deeds. And Paul had already heeded them a warning as well to check out whoever the new pastors were going to be to see what they needed to see about them. They knew that during this transition, it was going to be a time where Satan would try to wiggle his way into the church. This busy, sacrificing church had worked so much that they ended up developing something that was not good. They developed a heart condition. Their criticism came in at verse 4. Jesus told them, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Through all of the work, through all of the patience, through all of their labors, they had abandoned their first love. What was their first love? Of course, most believe that it was their love for Christ. Some of the commentary that I looked at, and I always look at many, but some said that it was their love for each other as well. You see, what we do for the Lord, listen, is important. What we do for each other is important, but what is also important is why we do these things that we do for the Lord. Why are we doing it? Just out of curiosity, do you remember your first love? I see some looks on some faces that um, there might be some wives looking over at the husbands saying, um, you better remember and it better have been me. That's okay. But you'll remember how you felt, right? You remember how you felt? You wanted to do everything that you could do to be around that person. You wanted to please. You wanted to impress them, maybe with a handwritten note, flowers, or a card, something like that that would get their attention. And, well, again, Lisa's not here. <laughs> I remember when she and I were dating. We didn't date long, by the way. For those of you who don't know, we met on, we had a phone conversation October 27th, had our first date November 6th, she got a ring on December the 12th, we were married on February the 12th. When you know, you know, right? That's right. I had an office that I supervised that happened to be right across the street from where Elisa worked in Walterboro. So in our office, I would position myself in a desk where I could see the door she used just in case she happened to come outside. Some people think it's stalking. 
I call it effective. <laughs> I did go to that office a lot more than I went to any others. And I didn't usually get a whole lot of work done in there either. But, but what about our love for Christ? What about our love for Christ? Maybe you'll remember that fire that you, that you had in your belly whenever you first got saved. You remember that? That's our first love for the Lord. We remember that, that fire that comes when we first got saved. You probably wanted to tell everybody what Jesus had done for you, and he would, he would do it for them too if, if they would just only ask for it. You remember that fire? Greg Laurie, who is pastor of Harvest Christian Church in Orange County, California, said in his book, Tell Someone, that he remembers this time in his life. After Jesus saved him, he was so in love with Jesus that even though he didn't completely know how to, he told everyone he possibly could about Jesus, asking them if they would accept Jesus as their Savior, not only just accept him, but do it right now. Love that terminology that he used. But some of us and others in the worldwide church may have felt that same passion, and this is good. We should have this passion, but we should never, ever lose it. We cannot lose the first love that we had for the Lord. What happens, though, is exactly what happened to this church in Ephesus. We get caught up. We get caught up in the busyness and in the works of the church. We're working so hard for Jesus, doing everything. We're, we're getting working on our committees. We're, we, we pick the church jobs that nobody else decides that they want to do. We stay tremendously busy doing everything we can, trying to serve the Lord, but we lose our focus on the why. As couples get married, they're together for years. They get accustomed to each other's routines. They know each other's habits, whether they're good or bad. If we're not careful, we will put more focus on the routine than we do the love. And this puts you in a difficult place over time in your marriage. The honeymoon days of a marriage, listen, must not ever disappear. Never. True, mature love must grow deeper roots. It should get richer and sweeter as the days go by. Think of this. In the church, it's possible to serve. It's possible to sacrifice. It's even possible to suffer for the Lord. But yet all the while we lose our love for the Lord. This church of Ephesus was all of these things. They were so busy maintaining their separation from the false teaching and the other things that they lost their adoration for the Lord. It was gone. The work became the focus instead of the love for the Lord. And you see, make this note, in any situation, labor is never a substitute for love. Never is it. In order to please the Lord as a church, we must have both of those things. We must have love and we must have labor, but both of these things must be done with passion. Passion from the Lord. We must passionately do the work of the Lord to further His kingdom without losing the reason that we do it. We do the work because we love Him. Look with me at verse 5. Jesus tells them this. He says, consider how far you've fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. You see, this church at Ephesus had fallen. And they had fallen long and they had fallen hard. They were not living up to their heavenly position that they had in Christ. They had become, listen, they had become a careless, loveless church. That's who they were. According to verse 5, we see what it says. Jesus doesn't guarantee permanence to any church. You see that? A loveless church, however, is 
really no longer a church, is it? Just as a side note, when we first moved here, Lisa and I kind of rode around and just rode around Aiken County kind of sightseeing and also going back and forth to her mom and dad's house. We'd pass through several counties, Bamberg, Barmel, uh, those type counties going to where we were going to see them. But the point of that is, is we passed by a ton of churches, a ton of churches. Churches in Aiken County and in these counties are plentiful. There's churches just about everywhere. If you're looking hard enough, you'll see one. And if you don't see it, drive another mile. They're there. And as we pass by looking at these things, we could tell the ones that appeared to be thriving. And then we could also tell the ones that didn't even look like they were still open. You've seen this. Now, you can't always gauge things on appearances. I understand that. But I can't help but wonder if these churches that are closed, boarded up, and even overgrown with weeds, I wonder if there are one or more of these seven churches. I wonder that. I wonder if once upon a time these closed churches were once a thriving church who got careless and lost their first love. Jesus says in verse 5, I will come to you and will remove your lampstand. Christ reserves the right, according to this scripture, to extinguish such a congregation, one who has lost their first love. We've seen this morning where Jesus has given approval to the church at Ephesus. He made the accusation of them losing their first love. Now we see his admonition. If churches have lost that first love, is there any way to get it back? I believe that these last few verses of the text give us three things that will restore that love that we once had for Christ. First, we have to remember. We have to remember what it is that we have lost and work towards regaining the close communion that we had with Jesus all the way back in the beginning. We have to remember that. Then secondly, we must repent. We must change our minds, our mindset, our heart set. We must change these things. Confess our sins to the Lord. And then thirdly, we must repeat the first works, whatever we were doing in the very beginning. In the beginning of our relationship with the Lord, do you remember how it was that you shared and showed your love for Him? Maybe it was through Bible study. Maybe it was through prayer. Maybe it was through fellowship with other believers, obedient service. Maybe it was through your worship. With all of these things consistently in our lives, listen, our love for the Lord would never fade. Never fade. You see, you can start again. It's not too late. We can get back to it. If you've been putting more emphasis on working for the Lord without an emphasis on your love for the Lord, that can be changed. For me, this is something that I want Cornerstone to be mindful of. I want us to be very mindful of this. Some of you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, that's never going to happen here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid it could. And for some, it may be happening already. I want you to hear this, listen. There's nothing wrong with doing God's work. Nothing. It's what we're called to do. We're called as Christians to be His hands and His feet. It's who we are in Christ. But like this church at Ephesus... It goes bad whenever we lose our passion for God. That's when it goes bad. The work must be done, and everyone should do their share so that it isn't such a burden on any one person, but it has to be done for the right reasons. The why. Listen, we don't do it for the buildings, we don't do it for the numbers. 
We don't do it so some people put a little extra into plate. No, we don't do it for those things. We do it, we serve the Lord, listen, because we love the Lord. That's where the service comes in. When our love for Him comes first, then we seek Him first. Matthew 6, 33. We seek Him first. All of these things, buildings, numbers, we seek Him first. All of these things will be added to us. That's what the Bible says. Loving God leads the way. So as Suzanne comes for just a few minutes here, I would like for you to take some time and self-evaluate. This church at Ephesus was a church who had become careless. It was made up of mostly careless believers who ended up neglecting their love for Christ. Now perhaps they didn't realize what they were doing. Maybe they didn't stop to consider what was happening in their own backyard. Either way, their love for Christ was not what it once was. Could this possibly be where you are today? Could that be where we are? Today's the day to make it right again. Today's the day that we can put it all back together with the help of, of the Lord. down in your soul you know what it means to work for the Lord because of your love for the Lord don't lose your love for him don't get so burdened and focused on the things of the church you see even church work can be a distraction from your love for the Lord balance Don't you remember how much sweeter the labor was when you were doing it because of your love for the Lord? I hope that you do today. As we close the sermon today, I just want to ask you, if this is you today, would you come and make that right? Would you come today and say, Lord, my love for you has not been what it needs to be. Lord, I want to be right before you. As I'm working in my church, I want it to be for the right reasons. Would you do that today? Stand with me if you would. She's going to play for just a few minutes. Perhaps you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. You've never even had this first love. Today could be the day for you. If you will just come and accept Him as your Savior. Today could be the day that you feel exactly what we're talking about with this first love. Would you come? Would you come and be a part of that? Suzanne plays just a verse or two. Don't hesitate. You come this morning. Seek God's will for your life. You come today, don't wait. Come and make this right. If this has been you, you've been so busy and tied up with all the things that you know you're working for the Lord. Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart right now and he's telling you this. Brother, sister, I miss my time with you. Thank you. I appreciate all you're doing. But I miss my time with you. Would you come back and give Jesus the time that he's asking for? You come today.
want to prolong our invitation. But the invitation, our altar is still open. You come this morning as we sing a closing song. Jesus saves. He still saves today. Sing this with me. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight at 6.30. Choir practice. We'd like to thank you for joining us on Facebook Live this morning. I truly hope that you've been blessed by something that's been said this morning. We just want to glorify the Lord here at Cornerstone. I pray that you've made a decision for Jesus Christ today. If you don't know him, I pray that you have come to know him this morning as your personal Savior. If you have, drop us a line. You can go to cbcaken.com backslash contact 
And you can leave me a message there. You can send me an email. It'll come directly to me. And that will let me know exactly what your decision for the Lord was. If you just need a prayer request, anything like that that you may need, that's a great place for you to go to do that. So join us again. We'll be live again on Facebook Live next Sunday morning at 1045. And then also on Wednesday nights, we're live at 630 for a Bible study. So join us. We'd love to see you there. Have a great, great day.